Okay. In the last segment, uh, you know, Nina had just begun to share with us, uh, you know, while they're becoming careless, they're kind of coming apart and losing some control, they're becoming much more sophisticated. Nina, do you just want to pick it up there, please? Yes, and um, and first I just want to premise that I think that mind control has been around forever because it's the nature of the realm we're in. It's a suggestible realm where our mind works under suggestibility. So, you know, obviously with religion or government or how the world has been running, they've always been able to convince people to do things, go to war or whatever, and they have their ways of doing that. But now with the technology that we have and the science that we have, they, they definitely have become more sophisticated to the point where I think they're doing it on all of us now. And and there's different levels. I mean, you don't have to be the child of being tortured and raped all the time to be affected by by trauma, if, like you said, being born is traumatic. Uh, and, w- and one thing, um, and I'll go back to this real quick. When my husband died, what I realized about that being a traumatic event for me, losing my maid and my whole life changing, and it made me feel for many years I felt very, my, low, my self-esteem was down. I had no faith in anything. It affected me on levels that surprised me, that the trauma of, the, of this made me really lose my footing. And so if they keep us always in a trauma-based reaction mode, which the media does, you don't have, you don't feel strong. You lose a level of your esteem and you don't feel like you have very good footing. And then now, you know, if you're in a boxing match or anything, you don't have good footing, you're going to get knocked down. So I think by them always showing all, keeping us at war, war is a very big mind control thing, even though it's meant to hurt and harm, it's also meant to condition people. To desensitize people to uh, torture, death. Uh, yeah, I abhor Yeah, and to keep us and, in fear. And, and when I hear at the top of the news, when I hear, um, you know, these news commentators rapidly calling for, you know, the U.S. military to be, you know, over, you know, working, defending us against ISIS for several, several years. Um, yes. it, it is about keeping us perpetually in a state of uncertainty, insecurity. And mm-hmm. we can begin to look who, who, you know, we're going to get to who are these people in charge. But I just wanted to go, you know, I quickly Googled Hollywood mind control because there were certain things I couldn't get, you know, on the tip of my tongue, even though I had a general sense of them. So this is, this is monarch, the nature of psychological compulsion it's such that those who act under constraint remain under the impression that they are acting on their own initiative. The victim of mind manipulation does not know that he is a victim. To him, the walls of his prison are invisible, and he believes himself to be free. That he is not free is apparent only to other people. His servitude is strictly objective. That's from Brave New World Revisited, Aldous Huxley in mm-hmm. 1958. And the mm-hmm. Monarch Program was an umbrella term for mind control devised by Disney in collaboration with the FBI. So I didn't know about any of this when my daughter was young, and I can't begin mm-hmm. to tell you how many Disney movies she's seen. You mm-hmm. know, and now with the music, uh, music is being produced in exactly the same way that Hollywood is. Um, mm-hmm. People with an ambition to make it uh, are basically mm-hmm. being engineered to present messages that move us ever more towards this, again, this uh, t- towards isolation and a, and a surreal. A mm-hmm. real experience. Yeah, out of touch existence. with reality. Yeah. So it's interesting. I find this interesting because I, I don't really watch a lot of pop videos. I don't watch music videos, but I make myself do because what I'm finding out, the kids are watching these videos. Right. And you're listening, like you listen to these beautiful music coming out of Miley's mouth or Beyonce songs or Rihanna songs, but then when you look at the videos, they're dark and they're creepy. Yeah. And most of us, uh, at our generation, we're not paying attention to the videos that the kids are watching, but the kids are watching, and there's a lot of subliminal stuff going on and subliminal information going in, and then you wonder why a kid decides they want to kill another kid out of the right. blue, because they were programmed by that, and that's right. part of how it's it's a very subtle thing to where you can't really quite put your finger on it, and when I bring it up to people around me, sometimes they just look at me like, oh, you're just... Two out there, Nina. I, I don't get you. It's like, well, I get it. To me, I feel like I've figured out the end of the movie and everybody else is still lost in the plot. That's what I see when I see it. 
Right. And right. And listeners, just so you know this, it's, it's, it's reported that there were uh, 40, between 40,000 and 2 million Americans that have been suggested to rendition and programming through a method called trauma repetition and reinforcement. This was deliberate. Um, and now what we're seeing is with the advancement of technology, with the uh, – with the uh, corporate takeover, uh, what we call mainstream, it, it, it's completely corporatized. It's all mm-hmm. for an agenda. Um, we, we begin. So they've got it down now. So one quote that uh, I want to say that Kathy O'Brien said in her book, she said, "You know, they don't use torture to extract information. They use torture to program information. So just like in the Inquisition, when they tortured all those people." They're, to try to get them to believe in the church or to believe in Jesus yeah. Christ, yeah. they were trying to implant that in them. Are we going to torture you until you do believe? Right. And hold on, because we're going to, going to break. I don't want you to get cut off. Okay. You know, I, I just, I, listeners, I have a couple of suggestions, and a lot of people, like I say, it's the people that are closest to me that are the most resistant. But one of the things I think we can do to begin to break free is to kill your TV. It just kill mm-hmm. any, and I'm not saying documentaries or films that you saw, but kill any mainstream programming. Mm-hmm. Stop yeah. listening to mainstream news. Yeah. Get rid of the newspaper. Find out, take a little time to research uh, sites that have shown a lot of credibility in, in, mm-hmm. in, in discerning. In other words, mm-hmm. can, they, can they verify what they say? Can you vet them? I mean, mm-hmm. there are excellent authors out there, people that have done mm-hmm. <laughs> decades of research. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. And begin to extract ourselves from this immoral, corrupt system. We've done a lot of shows mm-hmm. on this, Nina. What, what, and it's going to be different for everybody. Get active and educating mm-hmm. yourself and everybody else. Do you have any other suggestions? Homeschool if you can. Um, the, well, the, the one thing that came to mind when you were saying that is... Um, I just feel like we, we have to come to the confidence of knowing that you, you need to really trust your own intuition about things. And even though there's a lot of information out there and some details may be true and some details may, may not be true, for me, I feel that uh, you're looking for the, the smoke, that there is something with the smoke and the fire. So my experience of studying this stuff for years, even way back in the 70s, I was hearing predictions of how they were going to get everybody on credit cards, and then at some point in time they were going to rip off the whole system, which they did a few years ago. Mm-hmm. I believe that was the culmination of that plan that I had heard about in the 70s. So through my years of studying, I just I always put everything just I put it in my head. I, I have this place in my mind I call the open shelf, and I just put it there, and I don't judge it. I don't decide if it's true or not, and I don't really even care so much about the details as much as the overall sense of what I'm getting. And if people have a hard time with the mind control issue or some of these other issues, there's enough information out there and enough people telling these different stories that at some point you have to pay attention to the smoke. And then in my 30 years experience, I have come to find from my observations that a lot of the stuff I read is true, and I can predict things that are going to happen now. I've become very good at that by watching the media and saying, oh, they're going to do this and they're going to do this next. And my late husband, he used to think I was the most psychic person in the world. I used to say it's not really because I'm psychic. It's because I've read a lot and I'm just applying it. I'm applying these things that I've learned to what I see well, happening. And I can. And then the fact that we're right when we can make these predictions means that the information is probably more true than it isn't. Well, and they're predictable. Remember you were saying, and, they're predictable. and this, is, this is my belief, this is my belief is that whosoever, whatever this unseen hand is, is that they, they are consciousness without life, that, that they do not possess the, the, the marvelous human characteristic of love, compassion, empathy, right? Um, mm-hmm. the, the fact that we're willing to sacrifice for those that we love. And so, you know, the other, like you say, you've you got to watch for the smoke. And, and right now I'm, t- I'm getting better at predicting things. Um, and mm-hmm. you're right, it's not about being psychic. It's, it's about observing the patterns. If we take any time mm-hmm. at all to look at what's going on, we see that there are these repeating patterns. They're so mm-hmm. predictable. So what do we mm-hmm. do? We stop complying. We stop feeding mm-hmm. them our life, our life, our life source force mm-hmm. energy by succumbing to their fear. We stop yeah. obsessively passing around bad news, and we begin to look for ways to be empowered as individuals. Mm-hmm. Um, and to free ourselves from it. 
That's so I always, my code is, when the media is telling you to be afraid, that's when you don't want to be afraid because the real stuff that you should be afraid of, they keep secret. They don't tell you. Right. So like that's my rule of thumb. Oh, they want us to be afraid right now. Okay. I want to look into this. <laughs> right. Right. Well, like, it, like the Ebola scare, and I can't believe the people that are passing this around. We don't have time to go into it now. The thing we should really be afraid of is the transhumanism movement, which is yes. the, 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 this is being structured and set in place through geoengineering as well as vaccines as well as genetically modified foods. Mm-hmm. Um, again, you can look at classics like, you know, uh, Orwell's 1984. Uh, mm-hmm. We want to be afraid of uh, the nuclear experimentation, um, the mm-hmm. fact that, you know, they're telling us not to worry. There's a lot. And, and yeah, just that is exactly. To, yeah. You know, I want to thank you so much for being with us. Um, I really enjoyed this conversation and really honor who you are and what you do. It's been a tremendous pleasure to uh, become a part of your life. We're talking. I'm not putting her on the spot here. We have begun to discuss a woman's roundtable. <laughs> And uh-huh. she would, of course, be part of it. Um, so have a beautiful day. And, you know, listeners, you go out and have a beautiful day as well. I will see you tomorrow morning, same time, same place. 